It's time for Good Games Spawn Point. I'm Rad. And I'm Jem. Coming up on the show, two huge games. We'll be reviewing the colossal Sea of Thieves anniversary update, now with story mode and PvP arena. Plus, we try out the crazy creation tools of the upcoming PlayStation game, Dreams. And uh, speaking of dreams and sleepy time things, Shotgun, you being the one to wake up Will for the start of the show. Okay, uh... Ooh. When we first got our hands on Sea of Thieves, we were drawn into its beautiful deep blue waters and the idea of an online world full of pirate glory to be found. And while there was fun to be had, ultimately it was about as deep as a puddle. But one year on, it's had a heap of free updates and just received its biggest one yet, the anniversary update. Oh, so let's dive back in and see how the water is. Yes, a lot has been added to Sea of Thieves since it first came out. From drums, dinghies, skeleton ships, and megalodons, to a whole new area full of volcanic islands. But this latest update adds two of the most requested features yet, an actual campaign with a story and a dedicated multiplayer mode. I mean, it really should have had a story to begin with, in my opinion. But better late than never, right? And to kick it off, hit up your old mate, the mysterious stranger. He'll tell you about this lost land, the Shores of Gold, which is buried in a fog and can only be found by those who possess the mysterious Shroudbreaker artifact. They say it's an island riddled with untold riches, ancient secrets, hidden tombs, and deadly traps. But you won't find it on any map. It's fantastically silly pirate stuff, which I love. Lost treasure, buried artifacts, lands of gold, sign me up! The whole story is broken down into a bunch of individual quests, also known as Toil Tales. They work just like the usual voyages, although there's a bit more to them than just digging up a chest of gold or catching a chicken. Yeah, they've got fully voice acted cutscenes. I am Madame Olivia of the Order of Souls. And each one gives you a series of clues to follow in these amazing journals. Oh, the journals are fantastic. One had me following a bunch of children's drawings. Another has you retracing the trail of doomed lovers or navigating to ancient tombs through constellations and riddles. And they are some genuinely satisfying riddles and puzzles too. It made me feel like Indiana Jones trying to figure out some ancient mystery. I did feel like some of the clues were maybe a bit too cryptic, and I definitely got lost on a few occasions. The vessel-led man on a journey to the one respected by all. The grump now happy with the season, and all taught the warmonger to reason. What does that mean? Speaking of being lost, my biggest issue was just finding where to start the quests. The first two are easy enough, but then they tell you to go speak to certain characters, but they don't tell you where they are. A girl in a tavern, staring in awe. What, do they expect us to sail around to every single island to find them? Yeah, I feel like they want you to find these things as you stumble around exploring other stuff. But it is never good design if the only way to find something is through sheer dumb luck or looking up a guide. Overall, though, I think these story missions are exactly what the original game was missing. Ah, what do you need? They give the world much-needed character and lore, and give us lots of interesting things to do. And I like that each one of them has a bunch of random elements that change every time you do it. It just adds a bunch of replayability. One of my big complaints about the original game was that there wasn't much to do while sailing to your destinations, other than sailing. But now they've added the perfect pastime, fishing. Yes, now you can cast off a line and do a spot of fishing. And it's a great minigame too. There's a good amount of strategy to fighting the fish and reeling them in. And there's different bait for different fish, special fish to catch, and a whole hunter's faction to hand your catches into and progress through. You could spend days just fishing now. And I'm sure you did. <laughs> there's also a bunch of new foods and a whole cooking mechanic. You can fry up your catch for a super healthy meal. Just be careful not to burn it. Oops, it's still good. <laughs> 
The other big addition is the new player versus player mode called the arena. Here, up to four galleons compete to earn the most silver. The main way to get silver is by picking up chests and handing them in. And damaging other ships and players also gets you a bit too. But if your ship goes down, you lose a whole heap of silver. It is simple, but it's perfect if you're craving some high seas action. And it gives you a ton of those epic battle moments. Plus, there's a whole new faction based around it to work your way through too. And it just feels really unique. There's no other game that nails pirate action quite as well as this. It is best with friends though, since a good team with good communication will always win out. But we should wrap this up. So, Sea of Thieves, the anniversary update. What did we think? Well, I had some truly great gaming moments here. From single-handedly fighting off a megalodon, or being chased by a galleon into the jaws of a kraken, to just setting sail into the sunset and casting a line off the side of my boat. There's nowhere quite like the Sea of Thieves. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. Definitely. What was once a skeleton of a game is now a fully fleshed out, exciting pirate adventure. So I'm updating my score from two and a half to four. This feels like the game I was hoping Sea of Thieves would be at launch. I still have some gripes, like the combat is clunky and it does still make me seasick. <laughs> But the fishing alone is enough to make me easily recommend it now. I'm revising my score from two to three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Good morning, Australia! It's time for the scoop with me, Darren! And my guest, Rad. Oh, it is good to be back in the scoop seat, Darren. Affirmative. Let's kick things off with another instalment of Darren's Challenge! <laughs> what is the name of the main playable character in the game, Celeste? Ah, uh, yes, bit of a tricky one. It may not be what you think. <gasps> Answer at the end of the scoop. Right, before we get into the gaming news, we have another enlightening edition of Darren's Dialogue Box. <laughs> this week, we're once again reckoning with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. The official film trailer, released a few weeks ago, confirmed many people's concerns about Sonic's design. So, now that we've had some time to process, why not take the opportunity to delve into everything that's wrong with us? <laughs> Problem number one, the teeth. Too human, very creepy. All right, all right. This is Darren's dialogue box, not Darren's complaint corner. I actually kind of feel sorry for the artists working on the movie. A lot of work went into this Sonic, even if people aren't thrilled with the outcome. And now the director of the Sonic film has responded to people's criticisms of the design and said they're actually going to change it. Darren? Oh, Darren's complaint corner. Quite like the sound of that. Uh, will you make a note of that, please, Boat Neil? <laughs> oh. Anyway, here's hoping the new design will be more palatable to my visual receptors. Oh. Now, on to some news. A new Earthworm Jim game from its original creators is in the works. Interestingly, the new game will be released exclusively for the upcoming Amico retro-themed console. Eh, uh, that's a bit of a strange choice in my opinion, Darren. But apparently the CEO of the company that makes the Amico console worked on Earthworm Jim's music and sound design. Oh, good business sleuthing there, Rad. In other news, Microsoft Solitaire, Super Mario Kart and the early text adventure game Colossal Cave Adventure are amongst those officially inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame this year. Oh, Solitaire, wow. I haven't played that in ages. Oh, I still play it all the time. Did you know its origins as an IRL card game date back hundreds of years? Today, 35 billion games of Microsoft Solitaire are played per year across the globe. Oh, and how many of those billions are just you, Darren? Oh, you know, just a few modest million. <laughs> Moving on, and I've got some hot goss to share in Darren's Inside Scoop. <laughs> Rumours have emerged that the new Forza Street game, which is currently available for PC and soon to arrive on mobile, may find its way to the Switch too. That's the word on the street anyway. <laughs> the Forza Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I heard this 
latest rumor too. Apparently, data miners found several Switch references in the game's source code. You mean it's not a Darren exclusive inside scoop? <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, in any case, it's time for the extra scoop. <laughs> What do you have this week, Rad? Well, Darren, this week I've been digging a game from the 2019 Nordic Game Jam. It's Super Mario's first level reimagined in 10 different game genres. From a battle royale to a Bubba Is You style puzzler, even a card game. So versatile. <laughs> Before we go, it's time to reveal the answer to Darren's challenge. The name of the main playable character in the game Celeste is Madeline. A common misconception is that her name is Celeste, which is, in fact, the name of the mountain she must climb. You know what, Darren? I totally knew that one. Sure you did, Rad. Sure you did. <laughs> and that's all the time we have until we scoop again. Good night, Australia. I did know that one, Darren. No, 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 I know you did, Rat. I know you do. Dreams was first reviewed over seven years ago, but now, thanks to an early access release of its creator tools, it's in the hands of the general gaming public. Despite being dubbed a sandbox game, it's much more. From modeling to coding, sound design to lighting, Dreams allows you to bring to life the creation you've always dreamed of. This early access phase is not the final game, and the developers Media Molecule have said that they'll be listening to all our feedback to help shape Dreams for its full release at the end of the year. So at the moment, there's constantly new features and improvements being implemented. But Dreams is not just for the game developer within. You can also explore other people's dreams through dream surfing. Content creators across the globe have got to work pulling their ideas into the digital world. And there's countless creations to dive into from a wide variety of genres. Action, puzzlers, platformers and time trials. There's so much to uncover. And along with game ideas, some dreamers are just making art. From sweeping digital paintings to twisting psychedelic geometry and even the construction of digital locations and sets. These creations even have realistic lighting and sound design that could give some AAA games a run for their money. And with so many possible dreams to discover, choosing just one might feel a little overwhelming. Luckily, there's a mode to simplify the experience. Rather than searching through countless creations, Dream Hopping strings together a never-ending playlist of user-generated levels. You'll be bouncing from a sprawling alien landscape, to a 3D recreation of Cuphead, to a lovely indie experience, all within seconds. It's so inspiring seeing what brilliant minds can achieve. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit intimidated. I mean, I have all the tools to make something like this. Good luck me. I found it really helpful to look at some of the winning entries from the Community Jam events. There lies some tasty morsels. The Community Jam establishes a theme that Dreamweavers must centre their creation around, with the most liked dreams permanently hosted in the Hall of Fame. With three entries in each category, there's a wealth of talent on display. Now it's hard to criticise the quality of others' dreams if we've not made any ourselves, and the game gives us all the tools for the job. You can either kick off with a preset level from the developers or start fresh, jumping into sculpting mode, laying down the terrain, building up some detail, giving it a lick of paint, maybe even adding some movement through the preset library of gadgets. You can then drop in a preset puppet character and wander through the monstrosity you've created. And in my case, it was always a monstrosity. Yeah, I found it all a bit, how shall I put this, a tricky. If you're wanting to make anything from scratch, it's all about chiselling away at what is basically a big block of clay. And I struggled to get the fine control I wanted. I was using the PlayStation Move controllers, and for me, they were a little unresponsive, especially when attempting to move the camera. I'd kind of just waggle them in front of me until something happened that I vaguely wanted. There is also the option of using the standard controller, but I have to agree, it's pretty unintuitive either way, as is most of the dream shaping. There's hours of tutorials breaking down every step of coding and crafting, which is a great tool for those looking to make the most of dreams. But this is a game you'll need to invest plenty of time into. And I'm just not sure if it's the dream creating life for me. Yeah, uh, nothing has really clicked in place for me, though I did try and dabble with the additional modes. 
I tried my best to jump into the gameplay coding aspects, and despite my best efforts, it never really turned out. There is just so much in this that despite spending hours with it, I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. It all might be a little too daunting for most gamers, having to sit through hours of tutorials to learn how to move a block. But it is kind of worth it just to see what you can accomplish. Look, I found it hard enough sculpting anything out of a cube, let alone breathing life into it. And I know, I know, watch the tutorials, Gem, I know. If I had the patience, there's even a coding system using basic preset logic panels. You can also score your scene with music using built-in instruments and beats. There's even the ability to frame by frame animate a scene. It's super overwhelming. Yeah, that's why we chose to focus on sculpting something for a little bit of a GGSP challenge. Rad, how'd you go? Behold, artwork by Rad. I tried to make my beautiful dog boat meal, but instead it turned out a bit more like boat meal if he was made out of ice cream. Badly. What about you, Gem? What did you bring to the table? Well, do you remember this handsome fellow right here? I tried to make him, except it looked more like he'd been struck by lightning. Will? Well, I tried to make Darren, sculpting him from scratch, I gave him a paint job and even got him moving, albeit in an unintentional spinning fashion. I think he turned out pretty well. But after hours of crafting and chaos, how are we feeling about Dreams in its early access form? Well, because it's not the full finished version, I don't think it's fair to score it. But I will say that there's stacks to learn and it does show promise. Yeah, I've been following this mammoth concept for quite some time and having finally got my hands on it, I'm not sure. Whilst it's great to see the incredible creations the community has already put on show, I fear actually making something of my own would be a never ending pipe dream. Outside of the immense amount of time needed to hone my skills, I just found the motion controls unresponsive and a little frustrating. I'll be keeping a close eye on Dreams, but for now, it's certainly a wait and see. Yeah, I feel the same. It is difficult to learn and hard to master. Something that will require proper devotion to really make the most of what's on offer. But I am interested to see what it'll look like when it's finally released. Now, speaking of Dreams, here's how I go to sleep. Come here. Oh, sorry. All right, I think it's high time we answer some questions, don't you, Rad? Yes, but I think you will find that the expression is, it's high tide. I, I don't think that's right. Why would it be high tide to answer questions? Oh, you know, because time and tide wait for no one. And so when it's high tide, we have to answer questions, and I think the moon is involved somehow. But we'd better get started quickly before the tide goes out. Here's a video question from Elam. Hello, GGSP. I am a huge fan. I was wondering whether you had done a review on human fall flat. If not, can you please do a mini review? See ya. Thanks, Elam. In answer to your question about whether we've reviewed Human Fall Flat, I believe Goose, Hex and Darren did indeed review it on the show a few years back. You can check that out in our online archive to see what they thought. Gem and I also played it during one of our Friday live streams earlier this year. Oh, and what did you think about it, Rad? Oh, Will, it was a wibbling, <laughs> wobbling good time. And not to brag or anything, but I was very good at it. <sighs> Gonna climb hey, this mountain. You to bed. You if I were to give it a mini review, I'd say it's a great one to pick up for a bit of silly couch co-op. I give it four out of five mini rubber chickens. Ah, oh, well, that's good to know. Now let's have another question, and this one is from Isabel in Morissette, New South Wales. Hi, GGSP. I'm here to ask you about the game How to Train Your Dragon. Apparently it is a game for Xbox 360, is it? P.S. Darren, do these. Ooh, that's a Darren emoticon request. I better get him on the line. Uh... Hello, hello! Oh, hi, Darren. Some emoticons, please. Mm. Double A, semicolon crunch, Ben Bananke. Kind regards, your pal Izzy. Thanks, Darren. Bye! Oh. And thanks, my pal Izzy. In answer to your question about whether How to Train Your Dragon is a game for Xbox 360, well, it is. It was released back in 2010. The sequel, How to Train Your Dragon 2, also came to the Xbox 360 in 2014. These games are not exclusive to the 360, so they're on other platforms too. Don't forget to mention there are other How to Train Your Dragon related games available on other platforms as well. 
like School of Dragons for PC and mobile, and more recently, DreamWorks Dragons Dawn of New Riders for PC and the current generation of consoles. Yikes! Darren, you're still there? Oh, affirmative. Just figured I'd stick around to contribute some helpful info as always. Is that all I can help with for today? Uh, yes, thanks, Darren. Oh. Bye now. Oh. Let's oh. Just, just make sure the yeah. phone's extra hung up yeah. this Will do. Time. OK, yeah. now on to another question. Uh, this one is from the one true bandicoot in Hyrule, New South Wales. Oh, I wonder if the one true bandicoot knows Link. <laughs> hey, a GGSP, just a couple of quick questions to break the ice. Or the crates, as we bandicoots say. Lol. One, do you plan to review Crash Team Racing and Nitro Fueled when it comes out? Two, which character or characters are you guys most excited to play as in CTR Nitro Fueled? Mine is Coco in her Electron outfit. Bandicoot power for the win. Catch you later. Thanks, the one true Bandicoot. In answer to whether we plan to review Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, which is the remaster of the original Crash Team Racing, I'd say there's a pretty Good chance we'll take a look at it. I believe it's due out towards the end of June. As for which character or characters we're most excited to play as, you know, Crash was always my go-to in the original Crash Team Racing game. But if I remember correctly, Ripper Roo also had good handling, and Dr. Anjin is worth a mention. Will, I can't pick just one. It would be like choosing a favourite child. I can't wait to give them all a spin. But let's move on now to another fine question, like this one from Jeff, that's it, in Glenorchy, Tasmania. Hi, GGSP. I have a few questions for you. One, when is Minecraft Dungeons coming out in Australia? Two, will Clone Drone in the Danger Zone come out on mobile? Three, do you know when the Minecraft movie will come out in Australia? Thanks. Kind regards, Jeff. That's it. P.S. Darren, do this. Oh, more Darren stuff. Greetings. Ah, uh, Darren, there's another emoticon for you. Coy and confused. Thanks, Darren. Hanging up now good and proper. Don't stick around. Bye. Oh, my... Ah, well, thanks, Jeff. That's it. In answer to your question about when Minecraft Dungeons will be coming out in Australia, as far as we know, the release is due for some time this year, but I haven't seen an exact release window as yet. I love a good window. As for whether Clone Drone in the Danger Zone will come out on mobile, well, I think it's technically still in early access for PC. And it's a pretty small team developing the game, so my guess is they're focused on that platform. For now, at least. But you can always keep an eye out on their website for updates. Now to when the Minecraft movie might come out in Australia. Well, after a bunch of delays for various reasons, the release is currently planned for 2022, assuming that's the same for Australia. So, still a while to wait, though it's sure to be a blockbuster, right, Minecraft? Block. Ah, oh, you really built up to that one, really crafted that joke, didn't you, Will? Yeah, yes, well, pun pals. Oh. High five. <laughs> now, I think we've run out of tide for today. If you have a question for Ask SP, go here and send it in. And remember, we are always keen to see your video questions. And if yours appears on the show, we'll send you a GGSP pin. Wait, so now we've run out of tide altogether. How does that then...? Well, like I said, Will, the tide waits for no one. I don't see why you can't see that, you know? It comes in waves. Don't be salty. Sleep, little noob. Ba -ba -bum 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 -bum. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Ooh. Darren. Oh, hey, end of the show already. Yeah, but coming up next week, we review the magical mobile game Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Oh, made by the same team that did Pokemon Go? Yeah, they're actually very similar in a lot of ways. Well, I can't wait to find out if we can Avada Kedavra those pesky microtransactions. In the meantime, check out our online exclusive videos. This week, Gem and I have a let's play of Box Boy and Box Girl. It's a boxing good time. Until next time, rat out. Gem out. Will out. Darren out. You know what? I think it would be really cool to be an Animagus. Just turn into a dog whenever you want. Oh, I'd like to be a toaster.